Okay, welcome back guys. We're gonna get right into the stock market technical analysis. So we got a couple things in play. I wanna point them out, really uh, going into tech. Guys, if you're new and you're interested in this as a skill set, check out my stock market technical analysis course, link in the description below. Drop me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Uh, just let me know how I'm doing. All right, guys. We will get into triple Qs. All right, so a couple things. We are breaking higher today. And I pointed this out. You know, we have the, the resistance area is right up here at about 329-ish. That's, you know, again, I, I started calling for a rally back in June, the mid mid-June. And you'll go back and look at my videos. I was talking about how I thought we were going to rally. And the final target that I finally had on Triple Qs was 329, right there. I've got the little arrow pointed out. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like we're actually moving up into that. So I started shorting uh, the last couple days and, uh, you know, catching a little bit. You know, the move this morning is going against my position. The way I treated it is I actually covered my short early this morning after it started to... Uh, you know, started to hold up and rally, but I'm looking to reshort it. I'm looking to add back my short, and I've actually started already taking, uh, re adding some of that exposure, some of that short position back. Because here's the thing. Yeah, we were right here. I started shorting at 314 with the potential to go up to 329. I always talked about that as a potential, but the risk reward now is very unfavorable to be long. And it's much more favorable to short the market. We are coming into big resistance right up here. This is the downtrend on triple Qs that the that it's been in since we started this uh, since we started the bear market in triple Qs. So I want to start to add short exposure as we run, you know, as we start to creep into this major resistance, looking for the next leg lower, the next swing tradable leg lower in triple Qs. And the reason why I'm starting to add back, back that exposure is one, everybody's looking at this level. Everybody can see this as a clear level of resistance. Uh, and so I think it's obvious to all. And you, you oftentimes when a level is very obvious, people are gonna step in early and you won't actually hit that level. So I see that as the potential. When I go to the hourly chart on triple Qs, look what's, go, what's going on. We have negative divergence continuing to expand. And it's just extending, all right? And here it is on the PPO. It's just extending the negative divergence. So each new little high on the hourly has been a new high in price, but a divergent high. So divergent high, divergent high. We're just extending this divergence and it's not being burned through or taken out. I do think it's gonna play out for, a, you know, for that downsize move that we're looking for. Um, at the end of the day, I can't say that the end of this rally is over because we do have this trend line to watch. This is where the trend line started. This is where the uptrend that the rally started back here. And that hasn't been taken out. But I could say, you know, but I do think we're probably going to get rejected very soon and, and go down to that trend line. Okay, down there at that trend line, I'd probably be a buyer taking a shot to the long side. Uh, but, um, you know, up here, I, I don't want to be long. So if you're still long and you've managed to catch this rally, congratulations on today. You know, I didn't catch this part of it. But, you know, again, we don't get it all. We got most of it, you know, started going long. The Triple Qs has rallied almost 20% from the lows. So that's pretty good for, for a rally here. Um could go higher, of course. We do have the 200-day simple moving average up here at 344. That, you know, obviously we could go higher. I don't think so, but there is that potential. So I'm starting to add short exposure, but I'm going to give it, you know, I'm not going to add it all at once. I'm going to start to build a position. Um, as long as we ma maintain these divergences on the hourly chart that I just showed, then I like adding into this rally. Looking at the equal-weighted triple Qs, again, this... Uh, <coughs> kind of weights each uh, each stock in this index equally and doesn't have the heavy market cap weighted tech stocks skewing the, the index. Uh, we are getting a little bit of a breakout today on this trend line right here. You can see we've got you know resi resistance right there, resistance, 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 and a breakout, okay? So that does give me a little bit of a pause. If I look at the hourly though, 
this rally that's been occurring on the hourly chart is a divergent high. It's negative divergence. We continue to rally uh, with that negative divergence. So I think we're going to fail. I think this is going to be a fa false breakout right here on this triple Qs. We could run up higher and hit the 200. I, I think we're going to fail right here. Just my, just my opinion. Uh, we'll see how we uh, close the day and, and close the week, really. One day above, you know, what they like to do sometimes, I've seen it many times, they'll gap it above a key level, make it look like a breakout, and then the very next day, gap it down and fail. So that's what I think is going to happen. We'll see. And then the S&P 500, the SPY, this one, here's your downtrend line right here. This is kind of coming off the highs, the all-time highs. We could, uh, you know, we could obviously continue up a little bit more. Up about four, up to about 433-ish. Um, that would be a move of another 5% to the upside. <clears throat> not an area, it's not objective to go long anymore, okay? So if you are long, obviously you could uh, just hold out and see if you can get that. Uh, or maybe start to lighten up, raise stops, things like that. Protect your profits if you've caught in most of this rally. Looking at the hourly chart on SPY, we do, don't really have the negative divergence that was there before on the PPO. It is still there on the RSI. So kind of mixed a little bit, but we are making divergent highs against the RSI here uh, on the SPY. When I look at the RSP, which again, this is the or R RPS. Sorry, I had it right the first time. RSP, the equal weighted S&P 500. Again, big resistance right here at this key 145.85 level. Okay, see all those support, tags of support, and we are right there. So we are at major resistance. We've been there. We've been here pretty much all week. Nothing's really changed against that picture. I think we're going to get rejected here. If I look at the hourly, this is key. You know, it just kind of tells you what's going on. To me, it looks like we're just running stops and it's just getting ready to drop. But you see the hourly, we are just continuing to drop off on the momentum right there. So negative divergence here. So each little high, it's just kind of popping. It's like popcorn. Pop, make a new high, roll over and fail. Pop, make a new high, roll over and fail. To me, I think this is distribution. This is institutions who are who who were able to catch this rally they're now selling that those positions to um, to retail and uh, we should see that drop small caps okay small caps on the daily chart we've got a trend line coming off the all-time highs right here sorry guys I'm <coughs> wrong tool uh, there it is resistance uh, resistance all through here. And here we are, breaking out slightly above. However, mixed signals on this breakout. So we are breaking above that trend line, but if you look at the hourly, we've got a clear divergent high going on with a bearish rising wedge. So see the divergence right there? All right, got a bearish rising wedge on the hourly. This is all a bearish setup, so it's kind of a false breakout. That, that's the setup. I think this breakout right here is going to fail. It's gonna be a false breakout. Uh, and we're going to head lower. So I would look for this to actually roll over and fail. One way you can look at it on the hourly is potentially look for a break of this wedge to the downside. We break this wedge, we're probably going to break, you know, continue to break down and head uh, head quite a bit lower. So that's what it looks like it's going to do. Again, the market loves to trick people. So it's set up right now. It's making everything seems bullish and seems great, although we have some bearish uh, technicals telling me that this rally is just is coming to an end. And that's how that's how this works out. You know, typically my analysis, I see something and it doesn't just pivot right on a dime. Usually it takes a couple days, maybe a week or so before we actually get the move. But at the end of the day, I, you know, we look to be in the money and I continue to think that we're going to reverse pretty soon. So, I'm actually taking a position in this IWM shorting the IWM today as well. Uh, and again, starting to layer back into those triple Qs. I just exited for, you know, kind of a quick like duck some of the momentum that was going on this morning. And now I'm looking to add back into it. I think there is potential for a little more upside going back to triple Qs. Obviously a little more upside potential up to that 329. 
uh, and just as we go higher or if we go higher, I'll just continue to build back that full position. That's how I'm trading that one, guys. Um, let's look at uh, one that we did call, right? AMD. So this one I took profits this morning. Here's why I took profits. If I go to the daily chart, again, I talked about this right before earnings. We were rallying. We had negative divergence on the hourly chart, and we were right into that key resistance of one about 100 bucks. So it looked like we were going to fail. And this morning, we gapped down. Um, at some, at one point, we were down here around this 93, looking like we were going to fall back into this, this resistance line right here, this uh, kind of false breakout and fall back into here. But at the open, we were right there on support. Okay, it opened pretty much right on support. Once I saw that, I gave it a couple minutes to see if it was going to drop or, or start to rally. Looked like it was going to hold up. I took my profit. So just a quick trade in and out on that one. And the reason why I got out is because we were right at support. If we were to break down, then I would have held it and we would have looked to trade this all the way down to the bottom of the channel. But because we were at support, I don't want to be in a position, you know, I don't want to be short something right at support. Gold. Okay, so gold is looking at the daily chart here, we're, we're holding the support line. So support, which was resistance 1755, um, you can see we did break above it and bounced above it, and, but then we had to pull back right to support and we're holding that. So I think we hold here, continue higher uh, up to this 1800-ish area. Um, that still looks good for continuation to the upside. And then if you look at the GDX, Again, they just, they're struggling to break this uh, bullish falling wedge pattern. We still have a bullish falling wedge. However, they're making it look like it's going to fall back in. I suspect we hold here and it, and it bounces. Uh, probably tomorrow we rally. Uh, that's, what it, that's what I think it's going to do. Again, bullish divergence, bullish falling wedge pattern. They popped it above, but they're, it's just not impulsive enough. So I can't say it's a buy signal yet or a breakout, but to see some sort of a gap up or some sort of a green candle in here. And I think that would be the buy signal. So again, it's likely gonna show up before I can put the video out. So I just want everyone to know what to look for if it does show up. Looking for a green candle, a gap up, something right in this area. If we continue to move lower, well, we never got the buy signal on that one. So. But you see that you see that gap up or a green candle that would be the buy signal. I think GDX can can run. Uh, I still like it. Definitely a bullish set. And when you look at Newmont, so Newmont's the largest miner. It's a big component of GDX. Um, you can see here on the on the daily we're starting to get some bullish divergence, but it's very clear on the hourly chart. So here's the hourly bullish divergence. You've got momentum starting to move higher. If I can grab this stupid thing right there, momentum's moving higher, and yet price just today drifted down and made it made a new low. That's a divergent low. All right, we're likely to recover, and so far we have. And it, so this looks bullish, guys. Um, you know, can't guarantee that it's not going to continue to put in these divergent lows and make slightly new lower lows, but it, in general, it's a bullish setup, and there are buyers here. That's what the momentum's showing. It's showing that the selling pressure is drying up and the buyers are starting to take hold. So if that, you know, if Newmont can continue to build on the on this strength and this bullish uh, setup, then GDX should should break out as well. Oil, so oil's breaking down today. You've got a sell signal, oil taking out the support level of 93.57. You can see here that's big support. There it is, support, support, held it right there, taking that out at least as of right now. So we'll see how the day closes, but that's pretty bearish uh, in general. Looks like oil could continue lower. We checked the hourly here. Uh, it is a divergent low though, so that's the one thing. It's a, here it is, see the bullish divergence? It's, it's not confirmed, but it definitely is a divergent low as of right now. To confirm it, you'd need to see the RSI point up. You'd need to see the PPO start to point up, do a bullish crossover, but it is there, so. You know, I, I wouldn't take this breakdown yet. I'd wait and see how this plays out. You know, breakdowns that occur with bullish divergence are oftentimes traps or fake outs, whipsaw signals. So um, I'd probably wait for that to play out because that looks like oil could rally and hold up. So I don't really have a real, I don't have a, uh, you know, I don't have a position that I'm taking on this one. 
uh, due to that divergence. Here's a short setup. I like this one a lot. So this is Ford. It's been a very strong rally from uh, from the lows. From the lows, Ford has rallied up already about 52%, pretty much right into the 200-day. Looks like they're stepping in a little bit early. The 200's up here at 1669, and they started selling this thing at 1615. Close enough, right? The risk reward to go long on this thing is no longer favorable, and in fact, we're, I'm more interested in a short. So the thing that I'm watching for is you go to the hourly chart, You'll notice negative divergence on the RSI and the PPO. Okay, so we have both divergences on both momentum indicators. I've got this trend line to watch, just a short term time frame right there. I see a break of that. That's likely going to signal more selling uh, to come in forward. Uh, so going to the daily again, I think this is near the highs of this rally for Ford. Uh, it has wrought, rallied pretty strongly, but I think we're coming to, to an end here. So just waiting for that sell signal on Ford, all right? And then again, the, the target likely, you know, the likely profit target is probably, eh, if I go to the hourly, yeah, I would say it's down here, right down here at about 1340, okay? First target, 1340. And that would be from where we're at right now, a drop of about, what, 14%. So that's kind of the trade that I like for right now. Um, I don't know if I'm willing to let it go much further, but again, uh, waiting for that sell signal. I'm not in this trade yet, just waiting for it. And if we get it, we'll trade it down to that profit target. Okay, that's all I have, guys. Again, I am putting together a membership uh, service where we'll just basically cover, do some live streams and cover some... Uh, some individual stock picks in that membership. I don't have it yet. I haven't had time to put it together yet, guys. So that's coming soon. I'll let you know. Maybe I'll get to it this weekend. Otherwise, drop me a thumbs up, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.